Michael B. Got a question for Don and Dan. Do you guys in your prime think you could uh, beat the great Steven Seagal? <laughs> In what, uh, you know, uh, drink eat, eat at the local buffet, uh, yeah. martial arts, uh, I don't know, uh, the whole bar contest. Uh, I think he'd have us at the at the buffet for sure. You know, both of us together, we couldn't tag team. I don't know there, Don. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I still want to step up to that plate there. Right? Yeah, Even yeah. at my age, I think I'll still step up to that plate. Well, he's a little bit more rotund. Let's go that way. Well, I still... You, you should see how I put down the chow there this evening. I think you'd still be impressed. <laughs> oh, I know you can eat, Dan. I know you can eat. Run for it, Quinn. Run for it. <laughs> Dan's, talking, Dan's talking about eating. Run. <laughs> she come over here and hid behind me. <laughs> She's shaking. Well, okay. But, but then, uh, you know, Steven Seagal has been associated with a number of different uh, MMA fighters over the years. I don't know if he's ever... I mean, personally, I don't know if he's ever trained any of these competitors. I think he showed up once or twice, did he, at, at, at uh, a couple of these UFC shows? Yeah, I saw him with uh, Anderson Silva, which surprised the hell out of me. And Anderson Silva, I don't think he'd need, need any good luck charm, you know? <laughs> he's such a fantastic yeah. fighter. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Again, I, I have no... I've got nothing to really give on that one, really yay or nay on too. So it's kind of going that you know. So that's still a big question mark to me. I, I think I, he, I think Seagal's full of shit. I think he's a lying piece of shit. Let's put it that way. There, well, Dad, now don't now don't uh, pussyfoot around uh, the bush. You know? Sugar Let me know how you really feel about <laughs> something. It's okay. All righty. Let's see. How about number three? It's just the letter B. Dan, I would like to hear about your experience dealing with and fighting for Pride Fighting Championships. I believe you only fought in Pride once versus Chemo. Why only one time? Also, Becky Levi was in your corner for that fight and many others. Please talk about her abilities and how she was as a grappling slash sparring partner. Thank you, Mr. Beast. Okay, you said that was from... A uh, gentleman by the name of B. B, yeah, just the letter. Okay, <laughs> just the letter B. Okay, alphabet B. Well, B, um, Becky Levi was a, as far as I know, was the one of the first wrestling coaches out in the state of Arizona. One of the first female uh, coaches. Yep, 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 female coaches for sport of wrestling. So she definitely was uh way before women's wrestling ever became popular right. uh, whatsoever. And even when you look at the Olympic Games uh, that are taking place right now, as we speak, um, you know, women's wrestling is, is taking place. I think one one uh, U.S. scale has already either placed very high or has won a gold medal. I, I'm not certain. I, I really haven't been watching the games the way I normally would have been watching the sport of wrestling. But, you know, Becky had a lot of different skills as a weight trainer, um yeah she just, was a, just, just, she was a power lifter um but she also her, her she but she had a, tr a track and field background correct? yeah yeah to throw discus, shot and discus. discus and shot put yeah, yeah okay so again she understood what to do mechanically speaking inside of a weight room right. uh wrestling coach so she had other attributes there um just uh, again, uh, well, her her uh, basically her ring name was known as the specimen because just of her sheer uh, athletic size and stuff like that. I mean, uh, you know, she intimidated. Uh, I think she actually intimidated a lot of <laughs> a lot of men. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In, in the process. So, but um, the actual question was about be, being a pride. Okay, so be, being a pride. I, I guess I had. I'm just thinking for. Think for a moment. I, I did not realize I was only ever pride only for one event. It, it, if it was against uh, Kimbo Slice, no uh, Kimbo, Kimbo Slice, Kimbo. But the, no Kimbo, Kimbo. Sorry, sorry about that. You're um, slipping. You're slipping. <laughs> no, 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 no. I get it. I, at least I started with the same K. Okay, yeah, Kim, yeah, Kimbo yeah, right. or, or, or uh, Kimbo. All right. So, but uh, it was uh, 
the match with the full time limit. I wasn't mm-hmm. really happy about the match it went the full time. Um, each time that I tried to throw Kibo at that, he grabbed the ropes. Even though the, re- the referee was there trying to, uh, you know, you know, to slap his hand away from the ropes, something like that, mm-hmm. it wasn't still good enough. He actually stopped different types of launches that I was trying to to make. They ruled the match a tie. So when we went back there to they do the interview immediately after the match. As soon as the match is done, they, they take you back, they sit you down, you're being interviewed. And I mean, it was, uh, you know, they're telling me they're ruling a tie. I'm thinking it sh- there should, no way of it should have been a tie because I know who the aggressor was. I was the aggressor. I, I went after him a great deal. I was the one that was on the attack. He's one that, that was avoiding. He went, went, actually went to, uh, underneath the, the ropes, trying to escape at different times. <laughs> And uh, I, I told my sister, yeah, let's go back out there again. I said, right now, I said, you know, I, I don't, I don't want, I, I don't, you know, Prime supposed to be this uh, new dominant force in competition where only a match ends victoriously by one man's held, arm being held up. No, no, none of this tie crap. So, uh, yeah, but that that did not happen. And to me, it's like, you know, shows were, were simply just live at that point in time, but they were still some of the fly by the senior pants type of matches. So, I thought that might have might have happened, but it did not happen. So, long story short, it was one of those matches that I'll say it took place. Wasn't real happy camper of the results that came out of it. Uh, and there you have it. Good. Okay, here we go. Tony Rodriguez. This is to Dan and Don. What was your favorite fight of each other's you saw live? Question two. Why did you walk away from the UFC when you did, when you did, seeing as you were the guys at the time? Thank you for all the videos so far. I'm a huge fan of you both and have been since the 90s. It's so yeah. nice to see you so happy and enjoying what you do. My humble regards and best wishes from Hull in England. Stay toxic, brothers. <laughs> Stay toxic. Well, again, I like, I like that. It's yeah, a nice, that's cute. Uh, little, uh, so, I mean, uh, well, I mean, he wanted to know what match, because he had several parts there that he was looking yeah. for. The first question, what was the favorite fight of each other's you saw live? Oh, of each other's. Well, <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I, I know exactly the, the match I, that I could, you know, your match against Takayama. Yeah. I did not watch. I did not watch it that particular night because uh, I was probably off, you know, uh, chasing all my dollar myself. But uh, um, when I finally saw it, the match, I know that I called you immediately after watching it. And I think if I remember correctly, <laughs> I think I said something like, uh, Don, what was going through your mind other than Takiyama's fist at the time? Because, I mean, literally, it was when when you watch a match like that, that it, it was unbelievable to watch because I, I look at it, like, who won that fight? Well, the audience really is the true, the, the truest winners of that bout because they witnessed something that will probably never ever happen again. To see, I mean, literally when that referee signaled the match to start, the guys practically jogged towards each other, towards each other. And as soon as you got within arm's reach, you started throwing punches towards each other. And as you throw a punch away to, to each other, you, then you reach up and you literally reach up and you collar tie each other by the back of your head and you're just punching each other. It almost looks like simultaneously you're just punching each other in the face. And now what looks like to me like a game of chicken. It's like yeah. I'm punching you in the face, you son of a bitch. Are you going to give up? And I go, no, you son of a bitch. I'm going to come. I'm going to keep punching you in the face until you give up. And I'm yeah. thinking who really won that? That bout was... Anyone who ended up watching that pay per view that night because it was, thank you, it was extraordinary. It's something that probably will never 
people will never witness something like that ever again. I mean, it literally, that, that should go down in the archives of uh, greatest uh, MMA moments ever. And I'm not just saying it because, you know, my, my cohort there, but uh, no, I, I just, I realistically look at that. It's like incredible, incredible. And the fact that you're still here doing this. And now both of you have had a professional wrestling career. And I want to make some of our viewers aware of this, that Takiyama, again, I might be off of my time frame, four or five or six years back, you might be about this, was involved in a professional wrestling match and a very, very routine move uh, like a, a leapfrog, uh, leapfrog. Uh, what, yeah, I think he's leapfrog. doing a sunset flip. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Yep, sunset, yep, sunset flip. Went into just a simple sunset flip, I mean, which is one of the most basic moves ever taught. But because of of his, I don't know, maybe the, but the size of, of, of who was an opponent or something like this, who, who either didn't do quite right, but right. Takiyama in the process broke his neck and is now a quadriplegic for life. Good blessing. So to go from being out there in, in a stage and pride uh, with you, you know, captured the world's attention to a simple professional wrestling. I, I guess this is just, I'm, 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 I'm spending a little bit more time on this because a lot of people, they view professional wrestling as this f fake industry. There, there might be a predetermined outcome. But, but there is, there's, these athletes have got some incredible athletic ability of what they're doing, especially when you look at the high flyers and that. And when things go wrong, I mean, people get hurt. Yeah. And careers do come to an end. I mean, people like Stone Cold Steve Austin, I mean, he, he hurt his neck in the process. Yeah, right. And uh, I mean, there's, there's, there's lots of fighters, uh, I should say, lots of professional wrestlers that, uh, they have been injured, and that's how their career really kind of comes to an end. Just the, the overall toll of being on the road, the numerous uh, uh, number of matches that they have to do, and with each match, taking X number of bumps per match. It could be you know five or ten bumps, maybe twenty or thirty bumps a, a match. But when you start looking at, I think at the time I was working for the WWF, the average. Uh, career I, I should say the average number of matches was 187 matches a year yeah. was the contract so 187 matches when you look at travel to travel back from you're on the road uh i mean easily 200 plus days a year away from your friends your family and it's a uh, it's a it's a tough lifestyle it's a real tough lifestyle hard on the family Right. Plus, yeah. Again, I went. I went up. I kind of digress into a couple of different areas, but it's again talking about you know that match. You know, I, as I said, you know, the first point was what match I watched yours. It definitely was your match versus uh, Takiyama, but then I kind of sp spun into a couple of different areas because I mean I want people to understand that you've had a, a career in professional wrestling. I've had a career in professional wrestling, and you know it's still there. there there's a, a physical toll that it still takes on the body, even in something that has, you know, a uh, predicted outcome. Well, let's go back to the question. It was, okay. what, what was your favorite fighter of each other you saw live? Oh, see, I didn't see that live. So the, I, I th literally think the only time I was actually live was at your event in the... Puerto Rico. Yeah, I said, well, 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 but no, they're, they're actually, I'm trying to think because there's a, there's a comical picture, a comical theme that they make because they, they see me, I'm, I'm standing outside the cage wall behind you. Right. And you're, and you're in, in the middle right there, but I mean, it, it was really a comical picture. Yeah, Josh Barnett, Josh Barnett did that. Yeah. 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 That, that, that was pretty comical. I think he said something like, 864 women became pregnant just by the des description of this picture or something right, like that. Right. Yeah, that was great. I, I really enjoyed uh, Josh's uh, yeah. sense of humor. <laughs> I didn't know Josh was that funny. That was good. That was, good. <laughs> that was the first part of it. Okay. Uh, well, let me throw it back at you. All right. Uh, 
All right. I, I, I'm doing all the stuff for my yappy right now. What what, uh, what what favorite match of mine did you have to see? Oh, shit, Dan. That's, now you're putting me in a spot because I know that uh, I was there in Castle well, Rock. I, put, I, I just now put you in a spot. It was the mm. same question that you hit me with three different times. <laughs> I was there in Casper, Wyoming when you lost to Shamrock. I was there in Detroit. You know, we were on the same card. Um, but you were getting prepared for your fight when I was fighting. Um, yes. Uh, you know, I was there for that fight. Yeah, but, okay, I, I did watch a match. I mean, you destroyed your opponent with knees to the head. Yeah. I think it was very tough. Yeah, good. I'm yeah, no, it was. It was like right. I, I actually. I was starting to feel sorry for him because I'm thinking. I, 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 I'm actually in my mind. I'm saying, let go of his one leg because yeah. he can't <laughs> hold on to one leg, right, and, and right. he's eating the other knee right in the forehead. I'm like, oh, let's let go of that leg. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're gonna stop eating those knees, but uh, it would help. Yes. I, I was trying to do that for his own safety, knowing that okay, this match is only now, yeah. and that's okay. That's where. I understand this match is only now, but you have to live in this body for the rest of your life. And each time that you get hit to the head, the exterior might look okay. Yeah. But what is happening to that gray matter up here? Each time it's being sloshed around. That's where I, when I talk about, like boxers, they wear headgear mm -hmm. when they spar. And they, they spar pretty tense when they're sparring, boxing-wise, to where, oh, I don't want you to get cut. I don't want you to break right. your nose. Right. I want you to knock your teeth out. So, yeah, the headgear does a good job for all of that, but it doesn't do much for that gray matter because the gray matter is sloshed, it's sloshed, it's sloshed, yeah. sloshed. And a lot of boxers later in life, they do have problems with dementia and that. So, but at the same token, the test of time will, will find out for both of us as, as, as well. <laughs> So, okay. Again, I went off into another tangent. You gotta learn to cut me off there, Mr. Fry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That... Okay. He's, okay, or maybe put put Quinn onto that task. Okay, sick of I'll, Quinn. I'll, I'll, sick Quinn. Of, sick of Quinn. Get Quinn, him. get him. Get Uncle yeah. Dan. Get Uncle Dan. Yeah, good girl. He's, he's looking around. Okay. See, where is that bastard? <laughs> <laughs>